Hello, hi, this is Denise from Minty Green Mama, and I just wanted to do a video today about <laughs> the Starman Tarot. I actually, um, if you've watched some of my other videos, you know I'm, I'm not buying quite as many decks, but I had uh, pre-ordered this one um, quite a while back, and I was expecting it a bit sooner, but I just got it in, and so I wanted to um, do an unboxing video. Oops. Apparently it's covered with dust. <laughs> so, um, now normally this, uh, this style uh, of artwork is not something I would gravitate to, although I really like the colors that I've seen. Um, however, this is inspired um, by David Bowie. <laughs> the author is uh, David DeAngelis. DeAngelis? I hope I said that correctly. David, David DeAngelis, David DeAngelis. Um, and he actually did some artwork for David Bowie. So it says, you know, this was inspired by the artworks that um, David DeAngelis created for David Bowie. And uh, so I, I, I like David Bowie, I like his music, but for me, um, ever since he was in the labyrinth, <laughs> and uh, that role that, I mean, it just had the the movie The Labyrinth has had such a special um, part of my life. Like it just to me, it just seems so magical. And as a kid, this just is so special. And it's always had like a special part, a place in my heart. And so anything, um, just somehow David Bowie became associated with that in my mind. And so I I am a fan. So um, I really wanted to to look at this deck and try it and, and see see what I thought. Um, it says on the back that it is, um, that the concept for the Starman Tarot was born um, from the author's, uh, the time the author spent working with David Bowie on the albums Outside and Earthling. Um, it says it, ex it weaves together experimental typography, street art, eroticized sci-fi imagery, Influences of philosophy, shamanism, cosmology, futuristic cosmologies, chaos theory, um, Caravaggio, destroyed imagery of punk and sacred geometries. So, <laughs> I have no idea. I have no idea what to expect. Oh my goodness, this is insane. Okay, so I'm just going to open it up here. It's an interesting box, too. I resisted as long as I could. I, when I when I heard this was a thing, um, like I was like, oh, I don't need another deck. I don't know. You know, I looked at the um, the ad on or the uh, on Amazon. You know, the the page for it, and I was like, oh, it doesn't look like something I typically be interested in. But then, you know, I got to thinking like it's inspired by David Bowie. So, hey, you got to give it a try. So the box is really cool. It has this. Um, lightning bolt and then <laughs> and then this part comes off so let's see oh wow I mean it's very very vibrant you know colors which I really do like that and so let's see it's got it's got a nice book too and the book is about 190 pages it's in color, but it's not that glossy paper, which I actually prefer. Um, I just find like sometimes the books that have, you know, it looks nice. It's a really glossy, you know, shiny pages, full color, but I like to take notes in my book and highlight. And I find like it's a little bit difficult to do with that, with that kind of paper. So I, I prefer the, the nice like paper, paper in my books, although it, it really is a nice color. Let's see. <clears throat> And it has so let's see what it has a little bit about the journey it looks like of the process of creating or how he came to work with David Bowie and um, about the artwork that he created with him and it looks like his wife Esther DeAngelis actually wrote the book so that's interesting um, hmm. 
So it's interesting a lot about the artwork and how you know he came to to create that and a little bit of background and then an introduction to tarot it has right here. Um, one page of an introduction to tarot, a couple pages of the history of tarot, and then we come to the card meanings starting with the major arcane. Let's see. So, so it looks like you get, so this is interesting. So the fool is the sacred clown. And then it says, I laugh at the game of life, which is interesting. And you get, you know, like one and a half pages in an illustration. So it's pretty good. Ah, and one is the star man. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, so then it goes, you know, the high priestess, the empress. So a couple, um, so it looks like it's a lot of similar terminology, but it does change it to the sacred clown and the star man and i'm looking forward to reading the introduction to the book and seeing more about um about the background of his artwork and how he came to to create this deck and how you know his wife came to write the book so so let's see in the minor arcana have basically it looks like about the same so a page and a half and an illustration it does have a small reversed meaning here at the end just this last paragraph I like how um, it has like this little, almost kind of like a caption to the images. So for example, the four wands says, set the stage for celebration, communicate and build your pillars of relationship, achieve a beautiful balance. And reversed, weak foundations, lack of social support, loss of personal space. So it's almost like if you turned to the page that you were looking for, oh, and see, I see the sacred geometry back there. <laughs> it looks like the flower of life. Um, you get like kind of a little divinatory meaning and a little reversal meaning back there as well. So that's nice. Already, I'm really liking the colors. Um, as far as the images go, I'll have to see um, how I get along with those, but I really do like the colors. Very, very vibrant colors. So let's see what we have at the back here. So we do have, um, Using the tarot cards, so looks like just um, a couple of spreads as a Starman spread, the lightning bolt spread. Yeah, so just those two spreads. And then a little bit about um, the authors. David, I want to say, I hope I'm saying that right. And and um, and Esther, D'Angelis. Very nice. Says he's spent um, over a decade training with shamans and energy masters from both east and west. So that's very interesting. So I mean, not like super, you know, duper in depth, but a lot of information. So I, I'm pretty happy with that. I really, really, really like decks that have information about the um, about the deck and. It looks like, from what I can see, it does kind of talk about the image itself. I like that. I like that the best, actually. Instead of just a book that talks about the tarot in general that speaks about the specific imagery and the deck that it comes with, to me, that's the best. All right, so then it was just a little. I'm just trying to get to the card. So it's just a little pop out uh, thing. Not super duper heavy duty box. I do like like the outside is like pretty heavy duty. Like you can tell like mine got squished in the mail, but I mean it's a it's a box. I'm not not gonna worry about it. The inner inside part isn't quite as heavy duty, but still pretty good box. Starman Tarot. <laughs> I like the ones that have like the little pull tab. I don't see that on here. I don't want to ruin my deck, but I got it. Okay, so let's let us see what we shall see about this. Mm. Mm. <laughs> 
I've become picky about cardstock in my old age. This doesn't look super quality great, actually. The cardstock. It's very papery. It's not even like a laminated paper. Like it just feels kind of like a um a glossy piece of paper. I don't know. Not super great on the cardstock. Although I had heard that. So, I mean, if I use it a lot, I just have to buy a backup deck, I suppose. But, mm. so let's see what the back, do the other backs look like? Oh, gosh. So then it just comes with like a little Los Scarabeo card. So this is a Los Scarabeo deck. I don't know if I said that. It's got the cute little, I love their logo, little scarab. And then this is the backs of the cards. See that shiny, shiny stuff. Interesting though, the hot pink, hot pink. All right, so we had the Starman card. Yeah, I mean, I think it'll shuffle well, so that's something, you know. Um, I guess I'm, I have so many really nice, you know, decks that have really nice card stack. Even I have some little Scarabeo decks that I, you know, like the card stack. This just, it seems like if I bent it, it would get like a crease in it really easy. Like it just doesn't seem very sturdy, but it is what it is. So this is pretty creepy. <laughs> this is the sacred, the sacred clown. And there you go. I think this might be one of the images I saw online before I pre-ordered it, and it was one of the reasons that I originally didn't order the deck. <laughs> this, isn't, uh, this isn't exactly the kind of uh, imagery that I usually work with, but I'm, I'm interested. Let me just pull out the book real fast and see what it says about the sacred clown. I laugh at the game of life, it says. The sacred clown, or Hayoka, from the, from the Lakota tradition, knows that nothing we think is actually true, no belief is fixed. As trickster and shaman converge, he probes beneath the veil of normality to reveal the astonishing and unexpected, indeed, the gap between you and what you have understood to be you. His words are like a lightning bolt which can pierce the heart. So that all sounds actually pretty cool. I like that. And then there's a lot more. And it, it even goes on. Well, I'm going to set that down for a second. It says, um, this card depicts the sacred clown dressed in black and white striped antler hat. I was wondering what that was. I thought it was like a jester hat. A grinning um, mischief, mischievously, <laughs> mischievously as a burst of flame shoots from his finger. Oh, he's got a banana tattoo. Is that a tattoo or... <laughs> I don't know if you can see that. Oh my gosh. So <laughs> there's a banana to his pants. Yeah. Yes, I saw that. I want to see what it says about that. Seems, um, it's, uh, it says, for me, no other character so epitomized Bowie as the Hayoka, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. Um, he was an absolute master at piercing reality to expose the absurd. Hmm. So it does talk about the image. It doesn't go through like every single thing it looks like in the image um, and what it might mean. And I might be missing some stuff. It does say um, he's surrounded by walls of garish graffiti, which appear to be alive, um, bursting with energy, standing on a path bedecked with sharp tooth traps of ill-gotten gold, unconcerned they might cause him injury. He sees nothing but cosmic joke So, I mean, I think it has a good bit of information on the cards, I feel like. Um, I mean, I'll have to read it a little bit more in depth because there are different symbols here that um, on first glance I didn't see covered in the, in the guidebook. Like for instance, you know, you do see the sacred geometry back here. 
You did talk about the graffiti and about these little traps down here where his feet are. He's even got a sacred geometry. Is, is I don't know if you can really tell, but the print on his leggings. And we've got, I guess that banana is a tattoo because he's got like a little like happy face tattoo, it looks like, on his hand. Uh, it's intense, intense imagery there. There is a lot to see. So this is the Starman. And there's a lot of reflection on these cards because they're super shiny, but that's the Starman. It's interesting. That's the image from um, like the cover of the box. I like that image. I do. I'm not going to look at the book for everyone, but I just wanted to see specifically because, I mean, that one so, you know, looks like David Bowie. No, re this is interesting. It says no reverse for this card. Where does it say? It has a reversal for the Sacred Clown, the Fool, but it doesn't have a reversal for the Starman, which would be the Magician. Or the Alchemist is also in parentheses. It's interesting, because I feel like I didn't realize there was going to be so much depth of knowledge behind his work. I knew that it was inspired by his artwork that he did for David Bowie, but I did not know that he... Personally, um, David D'Angelis, the author, had so much, um, like a long history of actually studying, um, I forget what it said, like the shamanistic, over a decade trained with shamans and energy masters and involved in the field of human potential for over 30 years. So it sounds like, you know, he has a lot to include in here. So I'm, I'm really interested to work with these cards and read the book. My gosh, there's just, the images are busy, <laughs> complex. There is a lot in here. I don't think there's any way you really could cover all the details. You know, if, if they did symbolize something, I don't think you could put them in, in a book of only 200 pages. The Empress. It's interesting because, um, so like the High Priestess is like got a lot of green and blue type hues. Um, the green hues I normally associate with the Empress and I associate more like blue colors with the High Priestess. And here we have the High Priestess with the green and the Empress with the pink and orange. It's interesting. The Emperor. If you were going intuitively, um, if you were using this deck to like just work in, uh, really intuitively, I think that it would work really well because there's so many little things that your mind, you know, can pick up at any given time. And the image that you see <laughs> the first time you look at it is not going to be the image that you see when you um, look at it again. That's an interesting Hierophant card. Wow. It's Wow, is all I have to say about that. And it looks like like the back of the card, I really, I'm, you know, it has that little pattern and then it has that up here at the top. And I'm really not sure what that is. I'm sure it has some sort of significance, but I do not know. Hmm, the lovers. And it's just, you know, like the little, um, area on the bottom here that has the name. So it is, you know, there's no borders around the outside. I know a lot of people like that. Sometimes I like a good border. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. Chariot. It's like, looks like Komodo dragons. I have to look at that again, but it looks like it could be Komodo dragons pulling the chariot. This is wild stuff here, man. It's pretty wild. The strength. What is this pattern here? Is it like Featured on David Bowie album. I don't know. Is it means? What does it mean? <laughs> oh my gosh! So we have eight is strength and nine. 
would be the hermit normally is the alien. The alien. I really like that. Like, <laughs> I'm very into ancient aliens. So, the alien card. What else is in there? Hmm. Huh. There's sacred geometry, like, in here. There's, like, cave, you know, paintings. Um, that is... Wow. That one was cool. The wheel. Oh, my God. Goodness gracious me, oh my. Oh my gosh, my mind. You could really get sucked into these cards. So that, that would be interesting to explore. Justice is 11. Looks like she's holding a brain in one hand and a heart in the other. On first glance, I don't see like a sword or scales, but she's got the line <clears throat> kind of going down the middle is, you know, maybe dividing things like equally or fairly. And it kind of gives a, like a idea of like a sword. So I don't know, I really have to, <laughs> <laughs> to look at these images, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna really look too much at all of them because that video would be for ages. The hanged man. See, I have to I have to completely forgive the uh, cardstock quality at this point because the images are just so amazing that that I will want to work with this deck. <laughs> Temperance, the devil, hmm, interesting, very interesting. I don't see like anybody chained up or anything, but it is wild, like it looks like veins coming out of his head and arms. I have to read all of these just to see the tower. It's very cosmic, you know. I feel like we're in like a fantasy, you know, or like a sci-fi <laughs> novel and like the, you know, alien towers being destroyed. The star. The moon. I like that one. The sun, oh my, the colors <laughs> are vivid, very vivid. Judgment. Hmm. I wonder if that's why it's glossy. Some people, I think, feel like you can see the vivid colors, like stand, stand out better with glossy cardstock. I don't know if that's a thing. I've just, I've heard somebody mention that. The world. Got a typewriter and some skulls. Ace of Cups. Oh, this one's pretty. Two of Cups. Oh my gosh, it's like rainbow colors. Holy cow. Three of Cups. It is going to so bother me for ages and ages until I figure out what this this is if anybody knows let me know please like this symbol from the back that I see repeated throughout a lot of the cards like in different colors like it's like a little maybe it's a little bit different it's just I don't know like here like in black what is that four of cups five of cups Six of Cups, Seven of Cups, wow, all I can say about this deck 
<laughs> is wow. My mind is blown. Amazing images, like cosmic, you know, <laughs> images. I love it. Oh, look at this Ten of Cups. I love this one. Look at that family. Their bird, their cat. Love it. Sacred geometry in the background. Goodness gracious. Princess of Cups. So let's see. So it's Princess, Prince, Queen, King is how this goes. So there's a prince. I like that. I feel it's very balanced, you know, um, gender wise. Oh, it's interesting. Queen of Cups. Let's go. A lot going on in that card. <laughs> I don't think there's a card in this deck that doesn't have a lot of things going on in this, in the image. Ace of Pentacles. I like that because you can see like the earth. A lot of the images are very, you know, cosmic and you can actually see like earth and roots in this one. So I do like that. There are actually, um, there was cups, you know, images of cups in the cup cards and there are actually images of pentacles. It looks like, let's see, pentacles, wands, and swords. So traditionally named suits. I know, and I get like a very, um, oh gosh, Stargate vibe from some of these cards. As if we've just, you know, gone through the Stargate into another world. Because <laughs> it looks like, in the background, it looks like, you know, like towers. At first, I thought it was mountains, and then it kind of looks like maybe like the tops of some building, like some, you know, sci-fi fiction stuff. Oh, this one's nice. Five of Pentacles. Oh, okay. So it looks like as people begging, like they're outside maybe on in a street. It looks like they have tr a trash can, and they're holding their hand out. That person is. The other person looks like despairing, like a an apple core and some stuff down there. Five of Pentacles. I always feel like it's such a sad card. Uh, Six of Pentacles. Seven of Pentacles. Eight of Pentacles. Nine of Pentacles. And the Ten. Wow, there's like a little little family group right there sitting on the edge of that pinnacle that looks like it's kind of melting at the end or maybe it's just tilted down. I don't know. <laughs> oh my goodness, Princess of Pentacles. Wow, she looks pregnant and she looks like a clown. <laughs> but still gorgeous at the same time. Prince of Pentacles. Oh, nice. There's a horse in that one. So that would be like the knight. So that makes sense. So it still has some like horse imagery, even though it's prince and not knight. Oh man, this one, Queen of Pentacles. Like normally I like to not show every card because I like to leave surprises, but there's no way that you could tell, even if you watch this entire video and all the cards, um, it would look different when you when you got it because one there's the glare so I don't know if you can see all the imagery here and then two it's just so much that you have to probably see it over and over again ace of wands two of wands oh there's like a flying saucer in the background interesting I just want to read the whole book <laughs> <laughs> like sometimes I have that feeling where I'm like I always want to know about the deck but you know sometimes I just have that feeling like I really want to sit down with this guidebook and it doesn't look I mean it's almost 200 pages but it, they're ve it's a very you know it's only this this big it's not a huge size book so I think very uh be a very nice quick read three of wands 
Huh. It's interesting. It looks like he's standing out, like, on some sort of ledge overlooking the city. Like, it's very green-colored, so the first thing my mind goes to is Emerald City, you know? Four of Wands. Five of Wands. I'll have to look in the book again. I don't think that it gives any, like, astrological um, correspondences or anything, but that stuff, you know, you can find in, in other books on tarot, so... I do like when it's included, but not doesn't necessarily. And I don't know if that was even the author's intention to have that be a part of the this tarot deck, Six of Wands. Like I could just, you just have to keep looking over and over at them, and then you see different things every time. And But I really want to know what that, that is. Seven of Wands. Eight of Wands. So this one, I mean, it's... Still very, like, I get, like, the whole movement, like, the swift movement, like, I normally would read Eight of Wands. So, it's almost like they're blasting off, which is very cool. I like that. Nine of Wands. So, it does look like he's defending himself there, too. So, it's interesting because I wouldn't say this is very typical imagery at all. Um, however, some of the meanings that traditionally I would read the tarot, um, you know, my typical go-to <laughs> meanings, I guess you could say, like, I can see them in this deck. Like, this is the Ten of Wands, and you just see this guy. It's maybe a mummy? I don't know, but it just looks like he's beaten down by all those wands, like, just kind of coming at him. Out in the desert, like a staircase that leads to something with some sacred geometry in front of me. I have no idea. Princess of Wands. I'm really interested to read, especially about the court cards, because um, that's just something that I think it, depending on the, the book that you have, you know, it can really make a big difference from, from person to person how they interpret the court cards. So, Interested to see how this deck interprets interprets the court cards. Queen of Wands. So I still think it seems like, you know, like, so you can see the Prince of Wands, he has the wand and then the fire coming out. So, I mean, it really does seem like wands are still associated with, with fire and pinnacles with earth, the cups, you know, with water and so on, so might be just traditional elemental associations king of wands and then here we have the swords ace of swords and two of swords oh that's interesting it's like in the middle you can see a skeleton and she's like cut into two halves but the swords if you can see this they look so far they look like they're made out of not just regular metal. I don't know what that is. It looks like some sort of mineral. Interesting. Three of swords. It's like a robot guy in the background and like a figure in the front here with a can of paint and a question mark. Hmm. <laughs> you have to wonder, huh? So then here we have Four of Swords. I saw this image as well online when I was pre-ordering it, and uh, it's very similar to the Starman card. Like, let me see if I can get that one. Yeah, here we go. So you can see, so this was the Magician, the Starman uh, card, number one. And then this is the Four of Swords. So very, very similar, except for he has a sword and the four of swords. It looks like he's it's almost going through his hat. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting, because then it looks like almost like a little guitar right there, but it's hard to tell. This I have to definitely spend some time with these images. Like, they're so interesting and they're so colorful. I have no idea if I'm going to be able to read really well with them or not. But I, I am interested. I'm really interested 
in reading the book and it seems like there's actually a lot of quite a depth of meaning behind these cards this is the six of swords so i'm i'm interested to to learn more about them seven of swords oh eight of swords nine of swords ten of swords Princess of Swords. Ooh, very nice. She's like, looks like a superhero. <laughs> Princess of Swords. Okay, so this is definitely one of the images, the Prince of Swords that I saw when I was pre-ordering this deck. And I was like, um, yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> and then I just got so curious. I finally was like, okay, you know what? I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna get this deck. <clears throat> Which it was good because I really kind of wound down my uh, purchasing of decks, and it, it's fun to get it's fun to get them in the mail. And so um, I really liked <laughs> getting a new deck in the mail today. Queen of Swords, and finally the King of Swords with what looks like a baboon in the front there, which I'm sure means something. I'll have to look that up. My goodness gracious. So that is the Starman Tarot by David David De Angelis. I really hope I'm saying that right. With a book um, written by Esther De Angelis. And uh, yeah, there's, you know, the only thing that I see <clears throat> off the bat before having worked with this is just the card stack doesn't really feel very great. But um, it's definitely, let me shuffle it, because I'm sure that it's going to shuffle well. Although it is fairly large. Let me get a regular size tarot card. So it's a happy tarot card, which I feel is a nice regular size card. It's a low scare bail card too, so you can kind of see that it, these cards are taller and, you know, a little wider, so... They seem like they're going to be a little bit more challenging to shuffle because my hand just really doesn't get around them very well, but we'll see how it goes. <laughs> and my hands were just a tiny bit bigger. Yeah. They shuffle pretty nice. Although it's really hard. I'm going to have to do the corner, the corner shuffle because I just cannot get my hands around the stack very easily. Hmm. I'll have to develop a nice method to shuffle these, but I feel like they're slippery, so they're not stuck together. They slide against one another pretty well, so it's pretty good. All right, let's pull one card. Let's do. All right, we've got the Princess of Swords, the superhero card. And it looks like there's like a ghost right there. So let me just see what her... She says, and they all have kind of like a little um, statement right underneath the, the title. And hers is, I call on you to live your truth. <sighs> Amen, sister. Airy part of air. Princess of Swords says airy part of air. Dazzle in the delights of, I think it's a typo. It says dazzle in the delights of you ambition. So I think it's your ambitions. Possibly that's what they mean. Pay attention to your surroundings. Question your reality. Keep an open mind. Um, reverse being out of balance. Re-examine the meaning of life. Walk your truth. Connect to your philosophy. So dazzle in the delights of your ambitions pay attention to your surroundings let see she could fall off the edge at any minute if she wasn't paying attention question your reality yes i like that i think that is true keep an open mind well isn't that amazing so i think what this is saying is keep an open mind about this deck <laughs> <laughs> I think that it, this deck, it seems like maybe the purpose for me anyway, is to kind of tear apart the illusions of, 
about uh, reality and how things should be and how tarot even should be and kind of uh, help me break out of that out of that box so that'll be fun to play with I think so the star man star man excuse me star man tarot David Bowie inspired David Bowie artwork inspired tarot by David DeAngelis with book by Esther DeAngelis I really hope I'm saying their names right it says David's work is potent visual alchemy. It's a quote by David Bowie on the back of the box. And I would say that is definitely, definitely true. So I'm pretty happy. I'm happy with that. I can't wait to work with that. So I hope um, if you stuck around that you enjoyed the video and I hope you have a wonderful weekend and I'll talk to you later. Bye.